Okay, so um, I'm going to try to splice a bunch of videos together. Hopefully it won't take too long. But I've been um, going to try to regulate this guy. This is the Dorenzo DRZ04 uh, Mondio. Um, ever since I got it, uh, it's been running pretty decent. I mean, it's pretty consistent at roughly seven and a half six and a half seven and a half well, it's, i think it's averaging more to seven and a half almost eight seconds a day which is not terrible but uh, you know if you've seen me <laughs> my other stuff i've uh, i've tried to keep my um watches within plus no more than plus four if possible if not even tighter uh, my zodiac i got to wow plus one and a half maybe if even that um now the box i didn't have to do anything with my nth uh napkin renegade uh that one was with the miota movement in it it's it was averaging i think minus 0.2 or something like that is ridiculously it's, it's pretty pretty darn accurate um when i had my spdc 105 or spb 147 if that's the other the alternative reference number for that seiko prospects um you know, 62, 63 months kind of reissue that people are hot on. Um, I had the brown dial variant with the gilt, and that was minus 30 something out of the box, and I regulated it, and it ended up being like, again, plus one or two seconds or something. It was holding it really good, too. Um, my, uh, what else do I currently have? The, uh, the, um, um, uh, let's see what it's doing dial side up. Oh, I almost forgot. It's that loose already. <laughs> Let me try to dust that sh off. Anyways, um, we'll see what that measures. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so the, what else do I have? Um, the chronograph, uh, sorry, it's well, end of the day. <laughs> I'm trying to get my thoughts together before going to dinner. Um, the Ferrer Universal, uh, the Bernina that I have, the mechanical, you know, chronograph sport. That one is really good too, out of the box. I didn't have to mess with that. That was about plus one, you know, less than two seconds. Uh, it's, it's right around one second a day or something at, at best. At, I mean, at worst or whatever. It's, it's really holding good. So, I'm trying to get this one dialed into that. So let's see, dial side up, this is showing me if it's stabilizing already. I mean, the beat error and the, the amplitude is really good, 319. And I think it was about the same when I flipped it over the other way. Sometimes, you know, those, those reading changes, but uh, no beat error, um, good amplitude. It's, it's maybe one of the highest one I've seen. Plus four says, but I know I'm getting almost plus eight. So what I'm going to try to do is, again, I mentioned this in my other video that I, when I was messing around with the Zodiac, if I dial it down, because I think I want to try to get to no more than plus four, uh, maybe hopefully closer to plus three or two even. I mean, dialed into zero or one is really tricky, but we'll see. Um, but anyways, if I'm thinking I'm getting about an average of eight or seven, even seven and a half, I want to I want to try to knock it down four seconds to about four or three and a half. Um, we'll see if that translates to actually how it is on wrist um, and in practice. Hopefully it does, but sometimes it it's a little bit more or maybe not even enough. It kind of kind of varies. So well, uh, so yeah, definitely the amplitude is holding pretty nice and got a strong line. It's not actually that bad, but I think. What are we getting here? I think it's mostly averaging about plus four, plus five. So if I adjust it and I flip it back over, ideally it shouldn't be more than either zeroed out or plus one because it's kind of going to plus five, plus four, somewhere like that. So if I do dial it down about four seconds, uh, this shouldn't be lower than zero seconds a day with dial side up. So let's flip this back over to and so let's see here. So what I gotta do is you have this is using the I believe the Salida S2. Ah, I'm not even sure. I think it's S220 or is it 230? 
Um, I have to check uh, Dorito's site. I'm gonna clean out that gunk too before I close this stuff up. Um, but you, that screw right there, and let's see if I can get a better angle on it. So, turning it anti-clockwise, you see there's a minus sign up there, up on this end. Uh, that means it's going to slow it down. That's where I want to turn that screw. And then plus is on, obviously on the opposite end. So I'm going to dial it, uh, just turn it a bit, and I'm going to monitor my readings here. So I think this was showing me about plus... I think I thought I saw plus seven, but plus six plus five. It's pretty close to dial side up, just running a little faster. So I'm thinking if I can trim this down and it's showing maybe plus one or plus two, and then we'll check, we'll flip it around and check uh, it dial side up again just to see what, what that did to it. Um, that should be pretty darn good. Uh, so I'm going to. I, I can't work with the camera because it's going to be in my way. So just know that I'm going to take a screw, tiny screwdriver, turn that thing until we get a new reading, and I'll, I'll show it to you after I've I've done that. Okay, so I made uh, I went in here, made an adjustment. Now, basically, I turned it. You can go back and reference the uh, previous video, but basically, see how the horizontal marking on that screw is is what I'm using as reference, right? That was angled towards the plus side more, and I think it was near the second to the last notch, I guess, or marking uh, index. Let me see if I can um, carefully point to what I'm talking about. Let's see, where's my, here's my, well, I can't focus both. I don't want to jab my movement. But um, basically, it was right about that one. Not the last one, I think it was aimed closer towards the second to the last one. And I've turned it till it's about, looks like it's right in the middle one, right? So that's basically where, how much I, I turned it to. Just to let you know. And here's what I'm getting. And I think I hit where I want it to be. I'm expecting to, that it should be a, a better place for the movement. I don't want, I, I can live with a plus three or plus four second a day. But plus eight, seven and a half or so, I don't like to have more than a 30 second deviation. So in total, so that means from when I set the watch, uh, at best maybe about four days, I will have to reset it. So um, and resync it. This is that's all right. I mean that's actually not that bad, but. Um, I think we can do better. Um, I want to do better. I want it to do better. Because, um, yeah, sure. Maybe four days would be plenty of time for this watch anyways. And I should switch to to just one of my other ones, right? But I find... I'm trying to get more use out of my watches. You know, and that's why I've been kind of downsizing, actually, my collection a bit. And uh, with that in mind, I find that if a movement is particularly accurate I actually enjoy actually want to wear it even longer just to see how long I can go without having to reset it uh, it's just one of these kind of kind of quirks with me that um, <laughs> I just needed to be as perfectly running as possible which means as little if any deviation as possible with a you know a movement that isn't even necessarily completely balanced or regulated definitely not cost but you'd be surprised how much better than cost uh, performance you can get out of these non cost <laughs> movements um, you don't have to necessarily pay thousands of dollars to, to get something but anyways zeroed out that's pretty good actually um, this might run if it's any indication this might actually be pretty good so let's flip it over it was originally when I was doing it, it was actually showing me about plus two plus one hopefully it's not going to go lower than that but only time I can accept a negative deviation is if it's extremely slow <clears throat> so that basically I can go days or weeks without have feeling like I need to reset it and that's with like my um the NT8 sub is the only one that's uh gets slower but it's such a 
small amount, like over 10 days or something, and you only get a couple of seconds off at, at most, that that's fine, you know, I can totally live with that. But in general, try to get things on the um, um, positive. So as I explained in the other video, hacking, just hacking and waiting for time to catch up and then just unhacking it to resync it. It's a lot easier than having to hack, advance the time to the next minute, I guess, and then wait and then, you know, unhack and set it and get it all synced up because um, as you move the hands forward, you could get that ever so slightly off, you know, on the perfectly uh, aligned with the minute marking and that bugs me. So if I got it set to exactly where I want it, um, all I want to do is just hack it and, and unhack it and it should remain perfectly aligned with the markings that I last set it. Otherwise, once you start advancing it or something, it, you could probably throw it right off. Uh, so this is dial set up. It's showing zero too. Um, well, it's this thing. Is it read right? Yeah, it should be pretty balanced. I think my target, I, if you recall earlier, um, I want it to be zero or plus one. And it's zeroed out. Pretty good. So, um, yeah, the beat error just show up a little bit more, but that's hardly anything. Uh, amplitude is still good. Looking pretty good. Let me just flip it back over. Let's see what it's showing me one more time on this. And then I'm going to just clean that gunk off of the rim there. And then I'm going to close it up. Reset the watch and uh, have a go at it. And, we'll, and I'll report back later. Well, let me just finish up with the reading here to see what this shows me. We last left it. It kind of ended up zeroing out, which is pretty amazing. Hopefully I didn't overdo it. Plus one, plus three. I think over on this side, originally this was showing a little bit faster than dial side up. Um, I think it was averaging about plus six or seven or five or six, whereas the other side, I believe it was averaging what plus four plus five. Right? It's only off by about two, one or two seconds between dial side up and dial side down. And uh, this should be about right. Plus one, plus two is what I was, I believe I was aiming at to trim off about roughly four, three to four seconds. And zeroing out. As long as I don't see a dip to the negative, I don't think I've overdone it. So hopefully we'll see if if um, what I've done in this case, I know you saw my z uh, zenith, not zenith, I don't have a zenith, um, <laughs> zodiac. Um, I wish I had a zenith. Um, my zodiac one, um, what the readings show and what I was actually getting were, were pretty different. But it worked out in the end. Basically, whatever I'm actually getting on wrist is is the is what my goal is, right? I don't care what the readings necessarily tell me, but this is just something to measure where it was and where it is now. And then when I put it on wrist and check it, we'll see how that all kind of you know uh, relate to each other. The changes here versus on wrist, right? And we'll I'll let you know how that goes. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. I do that? Yeah, I did. I did do the update video on this uh, Zodiac. So, yep, looks good. Looks good. Um, could wait longer, but this is, I think this is where I want to be at. So, we'll see. So, uh, I'm going to close this up and um, get this back together and I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching. Okay, just wanted to quickly show me putting this back together, case back. I just, I actually just used this. It was tight enough with this uh, to loosen it and tighten it back up um yeah seals are good and i've taken this bracelet off before to try to demagnetize it i didn't want the bracelet on enough i thought maybe that might affect the readings or how it got magnet or demagnetized or something i don't know but putting it back on it's a little tricky it's actually a pretty a pretty tight fit in here so trying to just wedge you know when you usually use like a regular um, spring bar, spring bar tool, right? So just something like, like you know, like this. 
um, you usually try to fit one side in and then push one side back in and kind of wiggle it into place. There's, it's so tight that that was really a challenge for me to do last time. And so um, kind of made me like, I didn't want to take it apart again until I got one of these, um, these tools where you can just kind of go in and kind of lock it down and then push it in and let go and, and it'll, it should just fit right in. Cause you can, what this allows you to do is uh, not only try to avoid scratching the lugs because you have a grip on both ends of the spring bars and just kind of plop it in, insert it and release, slowly release it and the spring bar should find the way in and you can just pull this out. Uh, it also allows you to basically um, yeah, basically just drop the, that piece straight in so you don't have to uh, wiggle it around, like get once, try to get one side of the spring bar into the hole or as close to it as possible and then compress that other side and then push, get that one in. You know, it's a little bit of back and forth uh, when you play around with spring bars that are, when you're just reinserting these or even on uh, two piece straps or something, you know, when you have one spring bar, you can only work on one end at a time basically, right? So anyways, I'm just letting you know, if you're gonna work on this, you should try to get one of these. Trying to get the spring bar out is a little easier with just this actually, uh, or, you know, one of the regular spring bar kind of tools. I found that, cause I didn't know what the, uh, how to grip in there. It's, it, this can be a challenge to actually, unless you have this sized and got everything right, um, it can be a challenge to get that grip and compress it and pull it out. Um, I was trying it with a different wash and it tend to slip. So I kind of said, screw it. Cause this, these, the end of this thing is, um, you can see how it is. It just locks in with these, uh, I guess these screws here. And you can angle it too. You can see that there's these grooves that allow you to angle the, the tips up or down, I guess. Uh, to get a different angle, but I'm just going straight and the the, the tips also rotate with or pivot or whatever within that This uh, device, you know, right? I can't point to my my pinky here. Yeah it, it, um, it can basically rotate this way within within uh, Where it's being held so, you know, there's a couple of things you got to consider but anyways, let me see if I can, I will attempt to show you this. If I get out of focus, don't get mad because I'm trying to do this one-handed. Oh, I got it, I guess. And then, okay, coming up. Okay, coming up. So I just got it. I'm just going to drop it in, let go. I'm going to have to use my other hand to hold it. Hold on. So, yeah. Just want to make sure when I pull the spring bar tool back out, it doesn't somehow pull the spring bar a bit and the, the piece out with it. But, see, it just... Sorry, I don't have a proper camera rig set up so I can show it to you without uh, trying to juggle the camera in tools but I, being able to do that one-handed you can imagine it's kind of easy or relatively easy doing what i did and it, it just went in there like that so we are good so i'm going to get this reset the time resync it and uh check it and we'll, we'll take it from there um yeah another re i mean this is you want to want to keep if you get one of these integrated bracelets kind of watches generally you're going to keep it on the bracelet right but sometimes you may want to change it if you have that option and i believe dorenzo should be working on um, a rubber strap option which would be pretty cool he did show one at least one prototype uh photograph uh geez it's been a couple months ago Okay, sorry, I was being rushed for dinner. So, anyways, he should be working on a, um, a strap. But, 
And so if and when he does put that out, probably going to need one of these tools. You can more easily take this in and out uh, to change it. I mean, I think it would be nice to have it once in a while just to give it a sporty look, especially when it gets hot and maybe you want to wear this in the water or something more aquatic. Um, the rubber shell would be nice. And uh, I think one of these help. Uh, would I get this? I think uh, off Amazon. Actually, it's these kind of tools can run expensive, but I think I got this for around. This is what it is. And it comes with all these tips here, too. So they all different sizes and stuff. So, um, and they go into this little tube. I gotta put it back. So, uh, if I can, if you're really curious, if I can look at my order and find a link to it, so you can get one yourself. Uh, no affiliation or anything. Just, just trying to help out if in case anyone was curious. Um, all right, thanks, and I'll, I'll get back to you once I've uh, run this for a bit and see how the the watch uh, the accuracy has been affected. All right, thanks. Bye.